All right, factors that affect shaving. Um, identify what you want right away. <laughs> if you don't identify that terminal behavior, the behavior, the, the goal behavior, the one you're shooting for, then how are you going to know what a successive approximation is of that? All right? In order to, to identify that behavior, you also have to use an operational definition. So what does the behavior look like? So you have to be able to identify it when you see it, and you have to be able to identify when the person is getting closer to it. Every characteristic, the topography, the frequency, the duration, the latency, and the intensity, all of those things should be identified clearly. And keep in mind, those are the properties of any behavior. All behavior has topography, all behavior has frequency, and most behavior has duration, most behavior has latency, uh, and so on and so forth. So you, you have to look at each one of those things. Which ones are you going to shape? Are you going to shape all of them? Are you going to shape some of them? Uh, you know, each one of those things should be identified in order for shaping to be, in order for you to be successful at using shaping. Right off the bat with the initial behavior, you need to choose something that's related to the terminal behavior somehow. Okay, um, With Pixel, we didn't teach her to sit pretty by having her jump in a lake. You know, So it would be really hard to shape up jumping in a lake to sitting pretty. They're just not related to each other. right? But some type of sitting or standing, those are related to each other. So we can, um, we can link those very easily. So that's kind of the idea is find a simple connection. It's so like with the marquetry stuff in the previous example, it starts out with just some basic woodworking skills, right? Maybe some small inlay techniques, and we're going to uh, reinforce uh, more complex use of those basic skills. Okay? Identify the steps. Before you ever start, list out the steps ahead of time. That way, and the idea of what, what we're talking about with steps here is the, um, whatchamacallits, Oh, sorry, uh, just drawing a plank for a second. Uh, the steps are really the, those, those things that you're going to look for to reinforce, the successive approximations. Do you have to follow every single one of your steps? Not necessarily. The learner may jump a step or two, and you've got to be ready to reinforce that, that approximation. It's like, ooh, okay, cool. Pixel skipped that intermediary step, so now she's, at the, the, she's getting closer to standing or something like that, so I'm going to reinforce that. Okay? Um, so if you've listed those out ahead of time, then it's easier to know when you're going to go ahead and reinforce them. When you're doing this, you need to make sure that you establish each step. Okay? And again, you kind of let the learner guide you in terms of where they're at in the steps, but you literally, uh, you literally reinforce each approximation several times, if you need to. Okay, that's the other thing you need to be reflexive to that, and uh, maybe the person gets you know, through their steps very quickly. But if we go back to the marquetry example, you don't just do a little bit of inlay and then move on to a challenge like that one. You do a lot of inlay over and over again. Then you add more species of wood, right? and you try to work with those. And then you add more complex patterns, and you work with those. And after 5, 6, 10, 20 years, you get to doing floors like what you saw in that previous picture. One of the other things that you see with shaping is that the person is, remember, shaping also includes some sort of extinction as well, right? Um, it's similar to the fading type stuff in that sense. And the idea is that we're going to extinguish one response. We're no longer going to accept a response in that particular contact, or the, we're not going to accept a particular response, and it's a new response that we want. Um, so what happens is that sometimes people get stuck. Just think about that hot-cold game, right? Sometimes you got stuck when you were playing hot and cold, and you didn't know what to do, you didn't know where to go, and you just kind of sat there and went, oh, I don't know what to do, this is frustrating, right? So you're doing that, well, guess what? You've lost variation in behavior. The moment you lose that variation in behavior, you're no longer going to be able to move the person a step forward. Now you're going to have to back things up, because, because if you... If you can't move them forward, you're never going to reach that terminal behavior, the one you want. So you're going to have to back things up, right? Back up a step and make that change less large. So if we're doing the marquetry stuff again, we started, you know, maybe the person was working with some additional species but never really got on to, you know, you tried to ask for complex patterns and it never worked. Um, so you go back and then try and get them to keep practicing some more. Keep trying some successes and then add another smaller step. Add, instead of going from a complex, you know, going from basic marquetry to complex round stuff like what you see in the, in the picture, um, you could ask them to do complex uh, straight patterns, right? Maybe that works. And then from the complex straight patterns, you could get to the complex round ones. Um, 